Hello everyone and thank you for tuning into the Pet Expo YouTube channel. This is Barry and we have some wonderful news today. We got another reptile shipment in today so we have some really cool new animals. First ones we're looking at right now are actually green jeweled lacertas. So these just guys get much much larger about the size of a bearded dragon not so wide in the body so about two to two and a half feet and this is their juvenile colors so not too much the same as what they look like right now these guys will actually turn almost a solid green and all those nice little white spots that they have are actually going to turn blue so very very pretty lizard cares pretty close to the same as a bearded dragon but they do not eat any vegetable matter whatsoever so pretty much just like a carnivorous bearded dragon and these guys are from eastern europe or southeastern europe excuse me so very very good pet next one we have are fire skinks so these guys are a smaller skink species other one right there but these guys make great pets very mild mannered skink very slow and not very aggressive whatsoever these guys are an insectivore and they do have that nice beaded scales so at full size you are going to want probably about a 20 long to a 40 breeder depending on how you want to set it up and these guys once again insectivores and in kind of a moist environment very mild and very pretty skink Next one that we're moving to that we stuck in the sink here are bearded dragons. These guys are kind of your bread and butter type lizard. They get two to two and a half foot long. Omnivorous animal, kind of more insectivore when they're small. And then moving into more of vegetable matter as they get larger, but should provide both at all ages. These guys are an Australian desert lizard, so they do need UVA and UVB and a high basking heat spot. At full size, we do recommend about a 40 gallon tank. You can see all the color varieties on these guys. Next ones we're going to look at, regrettably I had to close the lid on them because they were really excited to come see us today. So. We're gonna pop this top open just for a short period of time but these are our green iguanas these guys not usually the best pets but a more of a specialized pet they do get about four to six foot long they are an herbivorous animal so they do require any type of vegetable usually if it's good for you it is good for them we're gonna get the other one that tucked out of there back into his cage here and we're gonna leave you with the focus of the beardies once again and then we're gonna move to some of our other fun animals that we got in our first one is our pink toed tarantula now these guys do make great pets handle pretty well now this is the metallic version so a little bit more color than most of your other pink toes and you can see the pretty little pink toes these guys work fine in a five and a half to 10 gallon tank. Depending on room temperature, you might want to provide them a little bit of heat. And these guys are strict insectivores. Also a fun thing about our spiders, when they do shed, they'll leave an exact copy of themselves. And then they'll kind of hide for a couple days as their exoskeleton hardens again. So we're gonna put the lid back onto there. There is a couple of those guys available right now. Next one, now this is for educational or scientific purpose only, just because of the size of him, but this is our little box turtle that came in today. If he gets much bigger, these guys do make great pets why they call him box turtles you can kind of see he's got a hinge plate there he'll be able to close himself up and complete and tight now these guys are an armed omnivorous turtle so they do tend to like to eat both your meaty products such as insects and worms then also your vegetable matter 
He's pretty excited to be here also. When these guys are full size, about a 20 to 40 gallon tank, so they have a little bit room to roam. And these guys do provide, or require, kind of a moist environment also. Now the next one we'll move to is our amphibian selection for today. We have a couple different ones. Now this one is supposedly a newer type, but it's the emerald version of our Pac-Man frog. You can see how bright this guy is. Get focused in on there. The Pac-Man frogs, usually about a 10 gallon tank is what they require, all they need. Because they usually just sit and wait for their food to come. So usually a moss mixed with plantation soil. And to start out, mice and then move into cockroaches as they get to full grown. We'll let you peek at the other one because this one caught my eye right off the bat. Just how bright that coloration is. Very, very cool. Now these guys, usually a heat mat works better so it doesn't dry out the environment as much. And then if you get a Rio stat, you can get that heated up for him to give him his proper temperature. The next ones we're gonna get are gonna be hard to believe, but they're one of our largest frogs. This is known as a pixie frog or an African bullfrog. You can actually still see his little tail there. So this guy just came out of his tadpole size. Now these guys, when they're full grown, usually about a 40 gallon tank is what we recommend, and he won't be that fast for very long. These guys literally will just, whoop, come on now. They'll literally just sit in one spot and wait for food to come, and they will eat about anything, crickets at this size, moving into roaches, and then moving into mice, rats, and if you can find frozen chickens, that's also a good food item for them. Our next ones we're gonna move into are snakes. Very, very fun ones here. These are Therii. So literally each one's gonna look different. Now like most of your corn snakes, these guys are gonna get four to five and a half foot long, so usually providing about a 40 gallon tank. And then these guys are a little bit cooler, so into the 80s for temperature on these. They make wonderful pets once again, and you won't see two of these the same coloration. So this is all gonna be the same species of tank, snake, excuse me, that we're going to be looking at. And you can see the color variance on all of these guys. And our next one, Nowhere close to the other one. This guy has really nice highlights of orange right by his head there. The nice thing about king snakes, these guys do not refuse meals. They are great eaters. And then our last one came in a little bit larger than the rest. But once again, another wonderful color. Now for king snakes, we also got... some California king snakes, one of my favorite king snakes. Now these ones are your high whites. This is showing some aberrant patterning there. You can see right where my finger's pointing, not the full stripe, but very, very cool. The next one here, there'll be three of each ones of these cow kings. Now these guys get about four two five foot long, eating mice their entire life. Usually a 20 to a 40 gallon tank is what you'd want for these guys and about 85 for your top temperature. Really nice high white also. And then our final high white one. Also showing a lot of that aberrant patterning on this one too. Very, very pretty snake. Now moving into our next snakes, we have some more cow kings. Now these guys are all just marked as your aberrant, so pretty much just a pattern that 
is not full so this one probably was looking like a stripe but also has the banded also and then moves into the solid black tail so very pretty also and then you can see the pattern on the belly doesn't continue just a solid white belly now king snakes like all other snakes eat mice and rats when they're full grown and a wonderful thing on your king snakes these guys can literally kind of the reverse stripe there with the white and you can see the little racing stripe there into the solid white belly these guys are very mellow king snakes once again make great pets and can live for about 20 to 25 years on average Some people will tell you that, oh, king snakes are bitey. These guys are very mellow. You can see he's got that stripe into the spots once again. He might be a little agitated. If you look into his eyes, it looks like he's getting ready to shed. A little bit clouding on the eyes there. But then really neat on the belly also for pattern. And then our final California king snakes. Are going to be the black and white banded now these are more the normal colored ones but these are showing some aberrant patterns also very pretty lots of black in that one now this is more of your normal what you'd normally find for your black and white banded king snake couple of barren patterns there once again but very very beautiful and then the last one showing almost the perfect just a little bit more black than white on that one so very very pretty goes all the way around now we're gonna move to our ball pythons these guys are one of the best pets out there they come in a lot of different morphs these are what we got in for our common ones here. You can kind of see your normal darker. There's a couple of them that show a little bit lighter pattern there. But these guys, once again, great, great pets. Have a very long lifespan and have been in captivity since the Egyptian age. Now full size on these guys is about four and a half to five, or uh, six foot long, excuse me. They are an African snake, so usually about 85 to 90 degrees on their hot spot, and then cool side can dip down into the 75 to 80s. Give them a large water bowl so they can soak when they're shedding their skin. And these guys will climb, so if you give them some branches instead of just a hut, usually if you give them just a hut, they're just going to sit there. But if you give them some branches, they will definitely climb around. Now, ball pythons sometimes can be a little bit more difficult for feeders, uh, so don't be worried if they do shut down for a couple months during the winter that is completely normal now full size we do recommend at least a 40 gallon tank to a 75 gallon tank for these guys just because of their sheer size and they do have heat pits on their face which we'll show you on the next one and those heat pits are made to pick up warmth so make sure a good trick is to of course keep these guys at temperature but also get their food to the right temperature. A normal mouse is gonna be somewhere between 100 and 104 degrees for body temperature. So if you get that mouse warm enough, you should have no problem feeding. Now this one here is one of what they call the specialty ball pythons. This is a coral glow ball python. Very beautiful yellow, orange, and reds into it. Ooh. And he's really liking that paper towel, and you can see kind of the purplish in him also. Now, if we look real close to the face here, we're going to try to get that paper because it's being shy. But you can see those heat pits. Oop. It's focusing on the snake trying to escape in the back there. But if you look right there, you can see those heat pits. And that helps that snake hunt that food. Besides their tongue, that's going to pick up any warm-blooded animal. So if you do not feed live or fresh kill, make sure you get that up to temperature so these guys will be attracted to that. Very, very nice looking snake there. 
If you have any further questions on a reptile order at all, please give us a call at 507-625-2505. This is Barry from the Pet Expo YouTube channel in Mankato, Minnesota.